Thank you all for coming out to a talk, structured scorecard results, tailor your own supply chain security policies. Uh, my name is David and this is Adam and we are, uh, we, 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 both, we both work at the company Ada Logix. Um, so introduction to the talk. The main point of the talk is to talk about a new feature in OpenSSF's scorecard project. And specifically, we will be talking about structured results, which is a new feature in OpenSSF that enables you to create custom software supply chain security policies. And if there's anything to take out of this talk, the main thing is that Scorecard has a lot of heuristics about various forms of supply chain security, um, sort of like heuristics, and you can take those to now build your own custom security policies. So there's a lot of like, you have a lot of Lego blocks that you can just start to assemble your various security policies from now according to the, the needs and, and your organization has and so on. So there's an accompanying blog post with a link and a quick disclaimer. Um, we are not maintainers of Scorecard. We have contributed these things. Um, so we don't speak on behalf of Scorecard as such. And uh, we want to just acknowledge the, the, the funding came from AWS to support this. Uh, so thank you very much, AWS. And we'd also like to uh, thank the scorecard maintainers for accepting our pull requests and so on, and also the OpenSSF team for enabling this uh, entirely. Right, so, uh, so am, I, am I on? One, two, one, two, I'm on. Uh, yeah, so <coughs> our involvement uh, specifically was to implement the structured results together with the, uh, in collaboration with the scorecard maintainers. So, uh, so the, yeah, the scorecard project had some um, background for, for the for the or specifications for the for the structured results, and we work with uh, with the maintainers to implement them. So, with that, I will give uh, the Adam the floor. Right, thank you. So, uh, so what is Scorecard? Uh, before we jump into the structured results, um, Scorecard is a tool to understand supply chain risk for software packages. Uh, it's hosted at the OpenSSF um, with its uh, website at. Uh, securityscorecards.dev uh, and it's, uh, open source, uh, it's an open source project hosted at uh, github.com slash ossf slash scorecard. Uh, at a minimum it takes an input which is a reference to a, a software package. Um, in most, I think most, in, the, in most cases it's a reference to a GitHub repository um, but scorecard also supports GitLab and uh, I just saw recently that it also spy, supports PyPy, a uh, reference to a PyPy package, uh, if this PyPy package is hosted on GitHub. Um, prior to structured results, um, the scorecard outputs a score, a, to a total score for, for, the, for the risk of the, the software package and a, a, a score for each scorecard check. We'll get into the scorecard checks in just a minute. <coughs> uh, scorecard can be used on the command line uh, as a GitHub workflow. Uh, there's also a, so scorecard also runs monthly scans, sorry, weekly scans of a, a ton of uh, critical open source packages and makes that data available through an, a public API or a dashboard that you can uh, browse through uh, in, in your browser. So the scorecard checks um, I would say prior to structured results, this, this was kind of the, the lowest primitive, if you will, of uh, scorecard, um, the, the lowest building block of, the, of outputting scorecard uh, scores. Um, well, as a, a check is a category of supply chain risk. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit, bit more what that means, but it's a category of supply chain risks. Um, uh, a check does multiple things under the cover um, and it, most checks, most scorecard checks uh, run and check for multiple heuristics that uh, shape the outcome of the, of the entire check. Uh, and a check returns a score and that score is, uh, and this, the check level score is used to shape the overall um, aggregated score of, uh, of all the checks. There are 19 checks um, and they are hosted at uh, scorecard slash checks. 
to walk real through, uh, real quick through uh, the checks for those that are unfamiliar with the scorecard project. For those, those that are familiar, this, this will be old news, but for those that are not, um, uh, let's go through them one by one. Um, there's the bi binary artifact checks check, which, which uh, checks the, the project for the existing, existence of, um, n of risky uh, binary artifacts in the source code, in the source tree. There's the branch prote protection check that checks for the settings of the of branch pr protection in the repository. Uh, there are CI, uh, there's the CI test check which uh, checks for whether the project runs uh, any tests in the CI. Um, uh, the CII best practices which checks for uh, an open source best practices, uh, best pra developer best practices batch uh, which requires uh, some understanding of security uh, best practices in, in software development. Um, then there's the code review check where, which um, checks whether the project uh, requires code review uh, or, or not for PRs. There's the contributors uh, check which uh, runs a series of heuristics for, um, for the contributors of the project. Um, and the, the idea here is um, for example, if, if a project does not have any external contributors or any contributors at all, uh, it, it could be a red flag. It's, it isn't necessarily, but it could be. Um, the dangerous workflow check, uh, which uh, checks for whether there are any um, uh, workflows in the repository that an attacker could potentially exploit. Um, there's uh, the dependency update, update tool check, which checks for whether um, the project uses an automated dependency updater um, so, such that the project gets uh, security updates automatically. Um, for example, as PRs that, that the project just needs to uh, approve and merge in. There's the fuzzing check, which uh, checks for whether the, fuzz, the project has fuzz tests in the source tree and or is integrated into the OSS project and or is uh, runs fuzzing in its CI. The license, which checks for a suitable uh, license. Maintained, which checks for whether the project is actively maintained or archived. Pin dependencies is whether the project um, pins the dependencies to uh, shards uh, or just refer references latest or tags, which can be dangerous. Packaging is whether the project packages the project uh, packages releases automatically, uh, for example, uh, or they or there's ma there are manual, manual steps involved. SAST, whether the project has any uh, SAST tools such as CodeQL uh, in its source tree, and whether they run them. Security policy um, is a, is a check that uh, that scorecard where, where scorecard checks whether the project has a security policy that probably explains how to report security uh, vulnerabilities to the project and, um, and has, has a, a few underlying heuristics such as uh, is there email, is, there, is it clear to wh how, what, yeah, how, how to disclose. Signed releases are releases signed um, and do they have verifi verifiable provenance. Uh, token permission is a uh, is, is whether the tokens of the repository, the token permissions of the repository are properly configured. Vulnerabilities, are there any uh, unfixed or uh, leftover or forgotten vulnerabilities in its source tree and webhooks, whether there are any exposed webhooks uh, that could be exploited. So uh, let's have a look real quick at the, at the, at the demo, how to run scorecard and how, what the output looks like. So uh, we mentioned that each check outputs its own score, um, which we see here. We have, we have this, the checks listed here. And, uh, and then we see the aggregate score up here. So let's see what that looks like. So he does it from scratch, yeah. gets scorecard from its upstream repository, and then shows how you can essentially run it yourself with just a few commands. Yeah. And the purpose of 
Um, yeah, of course, from, when doing it from scratch, we can see how fast it actually is to um, to to do it from uh, yeah from 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 the start. Uh, I have set up uh, my environment so that I have authenticated by way of a GitHub token. Um, so that that's a minor thing you will need to do, um, but it, but that takes about a minute. So let's see. That this should be all. And now we see that the checks are starting here. And in this example, we are running all the checks. Um, we can see them here. And it will take a second while scorecard uh, makes an API call to the scorecard repository here. To GitHub. Hmm? To GitHub. Yeah, to GitHub. And uh, gets the data, uh, analyzes it, and outputs the result. So here we, here we see the, the outcome uh, of, of a scorecard run. Uh, we, we have the aggregate score up here, 9.5 9 out of 10, which is excellent. And then we have the scores uh, of each check in the, in the left side here. And uh, the reason for the score in this third column and a link to the documentation. So very easy to, uh, to get started. And just, just as an example, let's try to run a, sim a single check. A little bit bigger, please. So let's try to just run the SEST check. And we can see the scorecard is just starting SEST. So static analysis tool, which is uh, vulnerability analysis using static analysis. Right. And we see here the scorecard itself scores 10 out of 10, because SEST tools, they have, the scorecard has SEST tools configured. Uh, and it, they run on all uh, commits. So very easy to, to use scorecard, um, uh, the scorecard checks. And yeah, yeah, to follow up, it's very easy to run. Uh, it's clear, concise, clear and concise output. We get a score and we get a reason for it. Um, the effort is very low. I think we, we, we got the results from a, an analysis, analysis in less than a minute. Um, and the reason that it's so easy is that Scorecard handles data collection, the evaluation, and the scoring for us. So end-to-end uh, -end, um, uh, with, with no intervention from us required to, to get a meaningful outcome. Of course, the cons of that, uh, or I mean, let's, let's be careful to call it cons, but there, the limitations of that is that uh, scorecard to, to facilitate such an easy workflow uh, puts a certain level of uh, opinion into its evaluation. And that, that opinion we, we can't really affect as users um, when, when we just consider the scorecard checks. Um, we, and the quote unquote problem with that is that we might have different opinions on what's important um, and we might be, want to score certain. Um, heuristic differently than scorecard does. Uh, following that is that, yeah, we can't, there are many things that we can't customize. Um, we, we can run the checks, but the checks have lower levels of um, primitives that, that we might want to run. And the action that we can do with the output is also, as a, follows from the low level customizability, we can't really, co take that much action, or at least there's use cases that we can't um, perform with, the, with a, just a score uh, of, of the checks and an aggregate, aggregated score. And that, that led to some scorecard users requesting that, um, that they get access to kind of the lower level, uh, the lower heuristics of scorecard. Um, I believe that was last year. Um, so that they, so that scorecard users can assign their own opinions to, uh, to the to the scorecard analysis, um, and that has two effects on uh, the scorecard um, user, the, the scorecard UX. Um, the first is, is that users now with with the scorecard structured results. First of all, users have access to and are able to consume the underlying heuristics of each check and they can select and choose which heuristics to consume in the first place. 
Secondly, there, there's the, the impact on the result side, uh, on the output side. Uh, instead of uh, getting a score, for example, uh, users can can define their own uh, yeah their own outputs uh, according to what they find important. For example, um, a, a true false statement and or uh, assign higher value to certain uh, heuristics than others. So with that, uh, scorecard has is def defines now a new term which are called probes, and probes are really just the underlying heuristics uh, of each check. And uh, one probe is an individual heuristic that makes a single single claim about a software package. It uh, they are they are often framed in a manner that where they ask yes or no questions, or they lead up to an answer that. Uh, that require a yes no answer um, and the probes can be considered and or consumed on its own in a meaningful way or as part of a scorecard check uh, in, its implement in their implementation pro probes have, uh, have a description that describes their, their purpose uh, motivation for why, why it's uh, something that you want to include in your analysis an outcome that uh, yeah, a definition of the outcome uh, in case you want to write your own actions against the outcome of this uh, of a probe and pragmatic steps to remediate a ne negative outcome. So a definition of a probe looks like this. Uh, at the definition level, we have the ID at the top, uh, a description here, checks, uh, 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 this is, so this is the archive probe which checks whether a project is archived uh, and the reason for why this is something that you want to consider in your security policy is well uh, nat naturally well not naturally but for the most part archived projects uh, don't get uh, security patches or security disclosures um, and we have the outcome defined here if the project is outcome this probe will return outcome true or true, uh, and if it's archived, the, uh, if it's not archived, the outcome is false. Um, and here we have, it, let's say that the outcome is true in case the project is archived. Um, the, we have a, a, a sentence here that describes how a project could remediate uh, a negative outcome. So look, let's look at how that looks. Um, here, so I have, I have set, set up a, an example repository here, uh, a scorecard example repository might be archived soon. So let's try to run scorecard on that repo. Yeah, so, so what we are running here is the same uh, entry point uh, with, with still a reference to a repository defined here. And then we choose, the, instead of choosing a check as we did before, we choose a probe, the archive probe, and the output we format as probe. Um, and let's try to just prettify it here with JQ. And here we see archive repository is not archived. So let's try to change that. And archive it and run again. And we see here repository is archived. And the outcome is now true. So that's the example of consuming a single probe instead of a check. And this is this is what what the what the what the structure is result is about, that you can consume the lower levels, i.e. the probes of um, of scorecard of the scorecard heuristics. Another example is uh, the has OSV vulnerabilities probe, um, which checks whether the project has known vulnerabilities and motivation. Well, 
if a project has vulnerabilities, we, it's obvious why we want to know about it. Um, if, let's see, if the outcome is true, then uh, if the outcome is true if there's a vulnerability found for the project in, in, the, in the OSV database. Um, and what is interesting here is that in this re remediation output, we, we get the, the ID of the vulnerability that is identified in the, in the package. Um, so let's try to see what that looks like. Let's try to unarchive this. So of course, not only is my example project ar archived or gets archived now and then, it also might also have a vulnerability that we'll want to check for here. So what we want to is instead of running the archive probe, which we could actually run two if we wanted to, but let's just run it simply here. We run the has OSV vulnerabilities probe against my project. And we see here that the project is vulnerability to this GitHub security advisory. Um, there's also a, a reference to this uh, Go um, vulnerability enumeration. So yeah. Uh, just as easy to run probes as it is to run the scorecard checks. And another probe example is the first uh, probe. Yeah, another probe is, is the first probe and fuzzing is a way to use dynamic probe analysis to find vulnerabilities in, in, in software. And the interesting thing about this probe is that it has more than one finding. So you can fuzz open source software in, in, in many ways in a certain sense. You can integrate into OSS first, but not all projects are allowed to get into OSS first only sort of like more critical ones. You can integrate fuzzing into your CI. You can also just have fuzzes in your code base, which is a sign of there might be fuzzes, but you don't necessarily show how you run them and so on. And the fuzzing probe is an example of that. I think in the spirit of time, I probably won't go into details with it, but um, this fuzzing probe essentially has uh, 10 or so different findings. So when you run, run the fuzzed probe on a given repository, it will tell you, uh, it can potentially tell you about each of these 10 things. So it will check, is the project in OSS first? Does the project have cluster fuzz light, which is a sort of like way to run fuzzing in your CI? It can also check if you have, for example, a specific type of Golang fuzzer, if you have, let's say, a regular C style fuzzer and so on. And the main point here is to show that one probe is not atomic in the sense that they can report several findings. So there are heuristics that are smaller than checks, but larger than something else. Um, that's the, perhaps the, the main take out from the, from the first probe. Yeah, I will get back to the probes in just a second, but just to illustrate what we mean by the underlying heuristics of, uh, of um, scorecard. So here we have the checks that scorecard implements and each check under the hood, even before we started uh, talking about structured results impl implements uh, or checks for several heuristics, for, for example, the security policy checks whether there is one at all, uh, whether it's empty or not, whether um, it contains how uh, information about the vulnerability disclosure, and whether it has any links to emails uh, or such. Um, so what we have done is we have made these very explicit in that you can, can consume them without the checks, and then you can choose and pick uh, which probes you want to uh, consume and invoke in your analysis. So, uh, yeah, any of the probes are invocable. So all search. these boxes were probes. Yeah, um, yeah, fine. Cool. So, uh, so scorecard also now defined, uh, defines an, uh, another new term, which is a finding, and the, uh, the a finding is the outcome of a probe. We, we saw it a bit um, in our examples. Actually, we saw it clearly what it is. Um, so I think, yeah, we, we saw it uh, in the live demo, so I think we, we can just skip through that. Kind of the main point, I guess, is that it's output in a convenient JSON format, so it's easily consumable, which kind of like leads the talk on, but. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let, let's talk about consuming uh, probes. Um, and the, the main part of the, of, or like an important part of uh, enabling this is to enable the use case that use, users have instead of having opinions about scores and, and uh, the output, um, output format as well. Scorecard 
enables these underlying heuristics to allow users to very customize them in a very uh, high, at a very high level. So the purpose here is that you have a package that you want to analyze for supply chain risk. You pipe it to a scorecard anal analysis run, and the scorecard run outputs uh, the structured results in a, in a JSON format. And then the, the user's own business, business log logic uh, kind of analyzes it and opinionates it. And from there, users really can do any, anything they want with, with, uh, with their own policies, such as make decisions, yes, no, um, it's, do, do we want to allow certain packages, do we want to, uh, yeah, uh, disallow them. Um, users can use, could, can define their own policy enforcer or policies uh, to conduct internal risk assessments, um, for, example, for example, regularly to see how, how the, the, to understand how they are performing. Or uh, users can uh, can make sure they comp comply with laws or uh, vendor agreements. So let's talk about uh, an example of using the the probes for uh, uh, a, an organization specific policy. Yeah. Um, so in the example, an organization has a policy that any project which is written in a memory unsafe language must be fussed before we can get it into our system. And that's a very convenient policy because, well, if, if, a, if a memory unsafe project is on your attack surface, it should definitely be fussed. Um, but the whole point here is that we now want to enforce a policy that says in our CI, before we take this dependency in, we must ensure that it's being fussed. So the way you would, all, we, do you, the way you would do that is simply start to implement in your CI, uh, check that uses the first probe from scorecard. And in our example, let's take a, a CRS project, CRS project, which is a DNS resolution library that has previously had a lot of vulnerabilities. Um, it's written in C and it does actually have pretty good security hygiene and uh, are very transparent about what's happening in the project. Right, and, and in this case, so a developer wants to introduce the CRS uh, as a dependency to the organization's uh, uh, software. So uh, an easy way, Adam has essentially just shown how, how to do this. You clone scorecard. And the, the, the trivial, most trivial way you can do it is on the command line, similar to what Adam just shown. And if you run it, you will get the result that indeed the project is in OSS for us and the outcome is true, which is kind of like a, a thing you could then inject in your policy. The policy will return true. This project is being fussed. In this case, it is being continuously fussed. And we can use that to accept it in, in our CI. Um, as I said before, uh, one probe can have multiple findings. And in this case, you will see what findings you actually get from um, CRs. I hope you can see it. But in short, it tells you that it's both in OSS oh, which is what you see up here. But then it also has, uh, the probe also has another finding, which is checking for the specific source code of fusters in the project. So it even tells you, in this case, the path of, for example, one of the fusters that are within the project. Um, and it even also tells you that it, well, yeah, that's what it tells you. The source code of the specific fusser, the specific harness in the repository. So it can tell you a lot of different things. Some people might, or some organizations might not be interested in knowing the specific source location of the harness. Um, in short, you could programmatically control this by essentially just reading the, the, the JSON output and, and handling it conveniently. You can start to create your own small policies by simple command line um, hacks, run scorecard, pass it to some simple Python logic and output yes or no. This could, for example, be used in your CI to ensure that any memory on safe dependency does in fact run in, or at least passes the, the first probe. And the whole point is that you can set up a larger workflow. You have a developer, you have a CI CD pipeline or a CI pipeline. The developer in this case makes a pull request introducing the new dependency into your repository. What then happens is the developer here tries to introduce it uh, as a pull request or something like that in your repository. Scorecard will then check, uh, make an API call 
to check whether, in this case, GitHub and so on, to start analyzing the project using Scorecard's uh, analysis engine. The output you get from that, structured results, and then you have your own policy enforcer down here, which goes then back to your pull request. If, the poly, if, the, if your policy enforcer is happy, the PI is, is approved. If your policy enforcer is not happy, the PI, the, the, the PI has failed. That's kind of the high-level logic uh, shown by this uh, example, and one way that you can deploy these custom policy engines. The main thing is here that you can start to do a lot of stuff here, and obviously we have a lot of probes that can come out from the structured results that you can then have a lot of combinations according to, to your needs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, in terms of support, um, the, the results are JSON. David, I think David pretty much mentioned it. The, the output is in JSON format, which makes it highly uh, interactable. Um, from from any uh, any programming language or policy engine, um, and we we showed a simple uh, Python script that would do this. But it's definitely more than convenient to work with uh, in the open policy en engine. I like it uh, with an est established policy engine such as the Open Policy Agent uh, or um, Kyberno for that matter. Um, but yeah, in, you you can uh, any program any program language that or policy engine that uh, handles JSON uh, can can be used to to process um, and or and define custom policies. Uh, while while we in included these examples, it's uh, important to note that uh, scorecard was not meant to just or like the structured results are not designed to run, uh, just run in the CI. And they were not designed for a, a particular uh, use case for that matter. They were, they were designed to make it, um, make it very uh, cost, uh, custom, make it very easy to customize your own uh, use cases with, uh, if you want to know about the supply chain risk in your uh, dependency tree. So, uh, so what we would like to hear is First of all, the feedback, so we encourage everyone in the community to start using this and testing it out and give feedback and on the scorecard repository as well as in Slack. Um, I know the maintainers from our experience are very uh, active, so uh, please get involved. Um, and also, I mean, definitely uh, try out new things and it would be great to see so we, we gave an example, but it would be amazing to see uh, use cases with, uh, with policy engines such as Open Policy Agent, Caverno, or know more about the specific use cases in industries uh, that uh, the community uh, needs scorecard for. Um, if you want to give any feedback uh, or have feedback about more probes, uh, technical uh, improvements, um, or want policy samples for particular ecosystems, um, that's please, please uh, create them or ask, uh, ask for it, uh, or share your own uh, use cases specific, uh, specific to your industry. And this is not just asking for feedback, but it's also intentions. More probes are needed. We would like to see many more probes. There's around 50, but I'm sure that there can be many more than that. Um, and there's also intention. It's just not asking for feedback in that sense. Yeah. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, conclusions, uh, David, do you want? OpenSSF, Scorecard is a tool to understand open source supply chain software security risks. Uh, structured results is a new added feature, and the whole goal is to expose all the underlying analyses that are done in Scorecard so that consumers can adjust their own needs to, to, to this. The analyses are very powerful, but the checks only kind of like give one opinionated uh, uh, opinion about them, and the whole goal is to make it a lot more usable by exposing many more different use cases, in this case, different policies. Um, yeah, and that's the whole goal of structured results. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.